What's going on everyone? In this video, we are going in depth with depth charts. We have already seen how the price chart allows us to visualize the trade history and we will now see how the depth chart allows us to visualize the order book. Before we go deep on the chart, let's take a look at what we will learn. These are the questions that we will answer. How is each point on the depth chart calculated? Why is the depth chart called a depth chart and how do we interpret its values? What causes the depth chart to change? We will also touch on a few important pitfalls to watch out for that can cause the depth chart to be misleading. We're going to use GDAX to explore the concept of a depth chart, but what we will learn is universal and applies the same no matter which exchange you use. Let's begin by examining how the depth chart is calculated at each point. The horizontal axis is stated in terms of the quote currency. The quote currency is said to do the pricing. In this case, we have a BTC order book that is priced or quoted in terms of USD. The vertical axis is stated in terms of size of the base currency, which in this case is BTC. So these values are sizes or amounts of Bitcoin. To read the chart, we choose a USD value on the horizontal axis and we find the corresponding size of BTC by checking the value on the depth chart. This setup is a function that maps from a USD input value to a BTC size output value. The rule for calculating the BTC size output at each USD input depends on which side of the order book we are on. And this is called a piecewise function because the rule that we use to calculate the output value depends on which piece of the order book we are on, the buy side or the sell side. If we are on the buy side of the order book, the rule is to collect all the BTC sizes on the buy side of the order book that are at or above our input USD value and take their sum. This will give us the BTC output size on the green line. Let's see this in action. The total sum of the sizes at or above 8797.79 is about 1.14 BTC. The total sum of the sizes at or above 8791.45 is about 4.21 BTC. The total sum of the sizes at or above 8790 is about 7.21 BTC. The total sum of the sizes at or above 8785 is about 17.25 BTC. Notice how there is more BTC to add up as we move our price lower. This is why the green line moves up as price moves down. In economics, this characteristic is called the law of demand. As price decreases, the quantity demanded increases. All right, I had to take a break for a few minutes. I'm back now and it's funny because the price has increased quite a bit. In between whenever I left and I came back, I have a new chart that I'm displaying here. One of the things I wanted to mention is that if you wanna look at this on your own, you may be wondering how I got my chart to actually stay still. And the way that I've gotten it to stay still is just by killing my internet connection and that will cause your UI to stop updating and then you can kind of look around and add these numbers up for yourself. But let's go ahead and look at the sell side of the order book now. The rule on the sell side of the order book is to take 
all of the sizes on the cell side that are at or below our input USD value and then take their sum. This gives us a BTC output size that is on the red line. So on the sell side, the total quantity supplied increases as the price increases. And this is why the red line moves up as the price moves higher. In economics, this is known as the law of supply. We now know how each point is calculated. So let's talk about why the chart is called a depth chart. To understand this name, we need to introduce another concept. And this concept is market depth. At each price, the market depth is defined to be the amount of demand that exists at or above that price, or the amount of supply that exists at or below that price. This definition has two parts and resembles a piecewise function just like we saw before. In fact, this definition is logically the same as the rules for calculating each point on the depth chart. With that being said, the cat is out of the bag. The depth chart shows us the market depth at each price. If we choose a price, the market depth at this price is given by the value of the line on the depth chart. The way the chart is depicted, it seems like it would be more logical to call it a height chart. Perhaps the word depth would make more sense visually if we turn the chart upside down. Anyway, at each price, there are two ways to interpret the market depth value, and which way depends on whether we are buying or selling. Let's consider an example. We'll just go ahead and choose 91.25 on the depth chart. And we can see that at this value, the market depth is about 80 BTC. If we are buying at this price, the market depth tells us how much demand is in front of our order. In this case, 80 BTC must be sold to these bidders before our order will be filled. If we are selling, the market depth tells us how much we can sell at or above 1925 without slipping past 1925. If we are a whale and we want to sell more than 80 BTC, we should expect to see the execution of our order slip past 1925 as it fills. And we can see in the UI that GDAX is telling us how much can be sold at a price at or above 1925. Let's move now and discuss what causes the depth chart to change. Before we do, I want to point to an important and relevant distinction between makers and takers. If you're not familiar with makers and takers, check out the maker versus taker video on the Deep Lizard channel. Makers generate the data we see in the order book. Takers generate the data we see in the trade history. Maker data in the order book is visualized with depth charts. Taker data in the trade history is visualized with price charts. Maker data is visible before trades occur. Taker data is visible only after trades occur. Let's unpack this a bit. The data in the trade history shows us the taker activity, and this is because trades only occur when a taker takes a match from the order book. We learn about takers only after they take from the order book and their trades hit the trade history. Takers are sometimes said to be on the sidelines. Their intent is not visible for market participants to see. Their intentions are hidden and unknown. The data in the order book, on the other hand, gives us the maker activity. And this data is visible before any trades occur. The intent of every maker is visible and posted to the order book for all market participants to see. No trading occurs with makers alone. Trades only occur when a taker matches with a maker. With these points about makers and takers in mind, let's talk about what causes the depth chart to change. We will explore the depth chart changes by looking at how maker and taker actions change the chart independently. 
Equipped with this information, you will be able to imagine what happens when makers and takers interact. Let's begin. Assume that all takers are now frozen and unable to submit orders, but makers, on the other hand, are still allowed to create, update, and remove their orders from the book. In this scenario, no trades will occur, but that doesn't mean the price in the market won't move. With these assumptions, let's consider two news events, a positive event and a negative event. A negative event. Suppose the US government announces that owning Bitcoin is now illegal. How will the depth chart change in this scenario? What will happen? Due to the uncertainty surrounding the scenario, buyers will remove their orders or update existing orders with lower prices. And sellers will create new orders and update existing orders with lower prices. In this scenario, the depth chart will shift lower to the left. It's important to remember that the takers are frozen, and so no trades will occur, but this fact doesn't stop the price from moving lower. A positive event. Suppose that the US government announces that Bitcoin is now the official currency of the United States. In this scenario, the bulls will move their orders up as the bears retreat, and the depth chart will shift to the right as prices move higher. Even though the composition of the order book is changing, the trade history does not change. This ability that makers have to move the price without takers is how large gaps can happen overnight in markets like the stock market. It's harder for large gaps to occur in markets that are always open, but there are still many gaps. They are small but numerous. If you look at the trade history, it will look like Swiss cheese with many holes from one trade to the next. The summary given by candlesticks invariably masks this fact. So check that out the next time you look at the trade history. Let's flip this logic now and freeze the makers so that all of their orders are set in stone. No creating, updating, or removing for the makers in this scenario. Assume a positive event, any positive event. What will happen? Well, the makers are unable to move their orders, so the buy side takers will have a nice time matching with all the sell side makers. Buy side takers will push the lowest asking price higher as they take the existing orders on the sell side of the order book. Imagine a bull taking a chunk out of the sell side of the book. The buy side makers are still frozen in this scenario, so the buy side of the order book won't move, and no sell side takers will be willing to touch those prices. If the buy side makers could, they would move their orders up to fill in this gap. Usually, they will trickle in slowly when the bulls take a chunk out of the sell side of the book. Sometimes you may think this is counterintuitive that you see a big sell wall and a small dagger-like shape on the buy side and the price is rising. This is the reason that we see those shapes in a rising price environment. In this scenario, the order book and the trade history both change. Now, if we consider the negative scenario with the sell side takers, it's going to be symmetrical with what we have just seen here, so we won't cover it directly. Before we conclude, I want to mention a few things to watch out for. The number one thing that you should take care to notice is that the depth chart is displayed in real time. This is very different from looking at the price chart. The price chart shows data over time. For the depth chart to do this, we would need to have a third dimension. Without seeing the depth chart over time, pattern recognition and relative measurements are not going to be a technique that can be utilized. And because the chart is changing in real time, it's likely that it will look very different even if the price only moves by a small amount. These supply spikes, for example, are not guaranteed to be there when the price starts to move in their direction. You could put your sell order in front of those spikes, but the whole market is a competition for the best prices. And as the participants behind those spikes move their prices lower to improve the chances that they get a fill, those bumps will likely even out. 
The last gotcha that I want to mention involves the scale of the chart. It's important to realize that 50 BTC on the buy side does not represent the same amount in the quote currency as 50 BTC on the sell side. This is because the prices are higher on the sell side. Additionally, the zoom setting can often be misleading. For example, just bumping back and forth, the perspective changes. And in general, the shapes that we see are not as straightforward as they may seem. Remember the example of the bull taking the chunk out of the sell side. That's all I want to say about depth charts for now. The most important takeaways from this video are how to calculate and interpret the values on the depth chart and to realize that these values give us the market depth at each price. After this is solid, it's a deeper concept but very useful to understand the maker-taker distinction we discussed and how the actions of makers and takers affect the composition of the order book. These interactions between makers and takers are fundamental to trading. I hope you like this video and find this content useful. If you do, be sure to check out the other videos like this one on the Deep Lizard channel and subscribe to stay up to date.